Good morning, and welcome to St. Mark's on this our Lord's Day, the day in which we celebrate the sixth Sunday of Pentecost, as well as in the United States of America, Independence Day on this July 4th. Happy 4th of July to one and all. To those who have gathered here today, uh, please note that if you feel comfortable and are fully vaccinated, you are indeed encouraged to remove your mask. So for those who are joining us by way of a video, please note that this is a recording and is not a live stream. We want to extend congratulations to our own organist, Sam Robinson. Sam has completed his master's degree from, from Boston College. Again, so blessed to have him with us that he can share his talents with us on a basis. Also, want to extend a thank you to both uh, Ray Huff and to Mel Wenzel for serving as St. Mark's representatives to our virtual Senate Assembly. I should also note that Ray has been uh, elected again to the position of Senate Secretary and will be attending the General Assembly. So, congratulations and thank you to both Ray and to Mel. Please note that because of a holiday tomorrow, the church office will be closed but will reopen again on July 6th. I invite you to stand as you are able that we might begin with a brief order for confession.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also,
Abram obeyed when he was called to set up for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he set up, not knowing where he was going. By faith he stayed for a time in the land he had been promised, as in a foreign land living in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked forward to the city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith he received power of procreation, even though he was too old, and Sarah herself was there, because he considered him faithful, who had promised. Therefore, from one person, and this one as good as dead, descendants were born, as many of the stars of heaven, and as innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. All of these died in faith without having received the promises, but from a distance they saw and greeted him. They confessed that they were strangers and foreigners on the earth. For people who speak in this way make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land that they had left behind, they would have had opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Indeed, he has prepared a city for them. The word of the Lord. Freedom to be who we are. 
The freedom in terms of government to govern ourselves. The freedom to acknowledge God. The freedom to listen. The freedom to embrace. The freedom to walk with God. The freedom to revel in God's great love and to tell the good news that in Jesus Christ we are set free from sin and death. Our freedom is not the reward for something done. It is declaring what is. Whether it be national freedom or political freedom or freedom in the life of the church, freedom is a gift. And it is to be used and defended for good because freedom enhances all of life. Scripture and our own Declaration of Independence defines freedom in this way. So then, how are we to use this incredible gift? For many, freedom is a call to claim independence from everything. We are set free from all claims. No one has a legal hold on you or on me. We're free. Free to do whatever we want. If we wish, we are free to do whatever makes us happy, only what we really want to do. I had a taste of this while I was on vacation. What to do, what not to do, what to eat, what not to eat. I wish I would have paid a little bit more attention to that one. We've seen a lot of this expression of freedom during this pandemic. Those who refuse to wear a mask, not because of health concerns, but because simply they didn't want to do it. Those who refused any kind of social distancing, and now those who refuse any kind of vaccination, they consider such things a violation of their freedom. We witnessed an insurrection at our United States Capitol because some maintained that their freedoms were under assault. And whether we agree or not, these actions were, are expressions of total freedom. Only doing what you want, only doing what you feel is necessary. There is another way, however, to look at freedom. One that is much more responsible. One which is of Christ. To be set free for love. To see ourselves as independent from anything that holds us back from showing love. This is the way of Christ. Jesus taught God has set us free for a purpose, and that purpose is to glorify God. How is God best glorified? Is it through pomp and circumstance? Is it through might and weaponry and fanfare? The answer is love. And how does God show the greatest love for us? cross. That's why it's central in place. That is why we are encouraged to make the sign of the cross when we pray, to remember our baptism, after we receive Holy Communion, because the cross is a reminder of God's love, God's love for us. It is a reminder of how God defeats sin, evil, and death through love. Therefore, sets us free. We are set free by love for the purpose of love. About a week and a half ago, we watched in horror as a condominium building in Suicide, Florida collapsed.
people were injured. There are some for whom we still don't know whereabouts. Some people are still unaccounted. How should we respond? We can show the way. Love. First responders, police officers, FEMA, medical personnel, politicians, family members and friends of loved ones who were victims, church relief organizations such as Movement Disaster Relief, prayer, concern, love. Christ has set us free to love. We are set free not to show less responsibility, but to show more. Christ asks us to show love in the midst of disaster, as well as in everyday life. Here again the words of our gospel for today. Be perfect, therefore. That is a reference to perfect love. Jesus is not telling us to be careful and don't make any mistakes. No. Jesus is telling us to excel in love and never to be satisfied in the amount of love that we show to another, that we see displayed. Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect, is a call to strive to love as Jesus teaches us to love. Do not look at love as one choice among many, but for us the only choice. For from and in that love we are set free. We are set free for justice, justice in our society, justice in our government, justice in our lives. We are set free for wisdom, for mercy, for hope, for concern, for peace. Set free not to hate others who happen to be different from the rest of us. Our baptism has set us free to be the people of love that God has birthed us to be. For in baptism, we are birthed to freedom. Our freedom in Christ. Our freedom to live as Christ asks us to live. Today in the United States of America is Independence Day. For us who claim Christ as Lord and Savior, it is a day to claim our independence from everything that holds us back, from feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, and proclaiming the Lord's name. The good news in which Jesus has entrusted us. Independence Day celebrates freedom, and Jesus encourages us to use our freedom to love as God has loved and continues to love us. Amen.
At this time, I would ask you to please remove the cup from the plastic bag and to carefully peel back the first layer. If you have difficulty, raise your hand so a usher may assist you. body of Christ given for you and for me. Now, if you would please peel back the second layer. Again, if you have difficulty, raise your hand. So I'm pushing the basis. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meeting, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. Share with you some announcements at this point. Again, a reminder that as you leave, if you would please leave your offering by wedding to the basket, and there are trash receptacles for you as you leave the building. Just a, again, a reminder that the church office will be closed tomorrow as we celebrate the holiday of the 4th of July. I invite you to please stand and you may be seated.
peace. You are the body.